Okay, so we've discussed so far the narrative structure of story, and we've discussed the characters involved in that story, and how we see those characters interact with one another as they deal with the conflict, and how they change as a result of that conflict. In particular, we've considered the character arc, how the protagonist changes. So let's spend a little time today thinking about how that narrative is actually presented to us. Here are a couple of very specific terms we want to keep in mind. Point of view is specifically the overall description of how the story is being presented to us. More specifically, we can talk about the narrator, or in fancier terms, the narrative voice. This is the voice that speaks to us and is a part of that larger idea of point of view. You want to keep these two concepts together, but also distinct. They are not synonymous. The two most common terms you're probably familiar with in terms of point of view are first person and third person. We're talking here about what kind of voice is telling us the story. In first-person point of view, we're talking about a story that's being told to us through the voice of a character within that story. Often this is the protagonist, but not always. In the opening lines of Camus' novel The Stranger, we see a clear example of a first-person narrator. My mom died today, or maybe yesterday, I can't be sure. The telegram from home says, your mother passed away, funeral tomorrow, deep sympathy, which leaves the doubt deep sympathy, which leaves the matter doubtful. It could have been yesterday. We can see here the protagonist is actually telling us the story. In third person, we have a narrative voice that's outside of the story, a character who does not exist within the story. Here's an example from Kafka's The Metamorphosis. One morning when Gregor Samsa woke from troubled dreams, he found himself transformed in his bed into a horrible bug. He lay on his armor like back, and if he lifted his head a little, he could see his brown belly slightly domed and divided by arches into stiff sections. One type of point of view you don't come across too often is called the second person. Here, you, the reader, are presented as a character in the story. One fairly famous example is from the 80s novel Bright Lights, Big City by Jay McInerney. You are not the kind of guy who would be at a place like this at this time of the morning. But here you are, and you cannot say that the terrain is entirely unfamiliar, although the details are fuzzy. You are in a nightclub, talking to a girl with a shaved head. This kind of narration is difficult because readers are often resistant to this, so you don't see it very often, but I did want to present it to you as so you can understand where we get these first-person and second-person and third-person options. Another question you want to ask is how much does the narrator know? How much is the narrator actually able to tell us? The narrator's knowledge of the story can be limited, in that he or she only knows as much as any individual would know. Or we can have an omniscient narrator, a narrator who's able to jump around from different perspectives and tell us what's happening to different characters at different times of the story. We also want to ask ourselves how reliable the narrator is. Is the narrator someone we can trust to give us the honest and objective truth of the story? Or is this a narrator who skews things, who tells us his or her version of the story, and who maybe withholds information from us or distorts parts of the story for some reason? So we talk about either having a reliable narrator or an unreliable narrator. We also want to think about the narrative time of the story. When is the story being told in relation to when the story is actually taking place? If it's being told to us from one time, but the story has happened in the past, we simply call this the past tense. Here's an example from Charles Dickens's A Tale of Two Cities. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of reason, it was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief, it was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light, it was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope, it was the winter of despair. We also have stories told to us in the present tense, being told to us as the story actually happens, as we can see with our example from Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man. I am an invisible man. No, I am not a spook like those who haunted Edgar Allan Poe, nor am I one of your Hollywood movie ectoplasms. I am a man of substance, of flesh and bone, fiber and liquids, and I might even be said to possess a mind. As with the second person, we have another option that's fairly uncommon but we can have stories told in the future tense. This is a pretty strange novel to begin with, and you'll usually only come across this in fairly experimental novels. But let's remember that the grammatical tense the author uses to tell the story is something we want to consider as it affects how we understand the story. To recap, we have several questions we want to consider about the narrative voice. Who is telling us the story? How much does the narrator know, and can we trust what they say? And what is the temporal distance between the story and the narration of the story? Now let's take a look at a few examples from comics. John Lewis's March trilogy is told to us in the first person and in the past tense. He's telling us the story as it happened to him 60 years after the events 
of the story. More commonly in superhero comics, we often see the third person, a narrator who is not a character within the story. In this old issue of Spider-Man, we see a third person narrator using the present tense. And finally, we can't talk about narrative voice in comics without at least mentioning Deadpool, who very famously has multiple narrators, or multiple voices talking to him and us. Okay, as usual, thanks for watching. Be sure to complete Video Quiz 3 before our next class meeting.